well uh, hello friends welcome to this video uh, in this video i will be discussing on the topic of uh, lagrangian mechanics uh, it will be the first video uh, in a series of uh, introduction to quantum field theory uh, that i will be uh, review reviewing right now so um, why we need quantum field theory one of the reason is that uh, uh, in case of high energy uh, physics where particles are made to collide with a very high energy uh, like in case of CERN, the particle numbers are finally not conserved. We can uh, have many particles produced out of vacuum and such a treatment cannot be done using the relativistic uh, quantum mechanics or uh, any kind of quantum mechanical treatment. For that, it is necessary for us to uh, uh, use the uh, use the formalisms of uh, quantum field theory, and which also provides a basic understanding of how particles are created for, uh, from vacuum or uh, when nothing is there. So, like we have proton-proton uh, collision, it finally creates uh, the two proton. And plus we have uh, the a proton and antiproton pair created out of vacuum. So uh, we need to deal with such uh, interactions. So uh, we first start with the viewpoint of uh, Lagrangian mechanics uh, where we uh, take the action S and we extremize the action with respect to the path Y. So uh, this L that we see here later will be the Lagrangian, here it can be any function. So we just want to um, extremize this S. So for that we say that let, let's, let's assume that the extrema of this path is fixed and that fixed uh, extrema is Y of X here. So this is the extrema that is fixed and then we will vary this extrema using the parameter of eta and the alpha. So when alpha is equal to 0 we land at the extrema and for small alpha changes we will modulate this extrema path by the parameter of uh, eta which is itself a function of the x. So here x is not position or anything, x is a simple parameter and y is a simple function of a parameter x and nothing else is stated. So such kind of a variation over the path of parameters are called homotopic curves and uh, these uh, curves are important uh, in uh, various cases. So uh, s, so the we have to say that uh, s the action uh, its derivative with respect to alpha at alpha equal to 0 must be 0 for y of x to be an extrema so remember y of x has been a postulated extrema path so given that what we can do is that we can take the derivative and the derivative uh, is uh, of L with respect to alpha will be derivative of L with respect to Y and Y with respect to alpha. And Y with respect to alpha derivative gives us the eta function. Similarly, we get these two contribution that we see here. And now we can take the integration by part of the second, uh, second integrand. And then we can use the fact that uh, the extrema, uh, so the extremum path, we have a path x1, we have a point x2 and we are varying, so this is y of x suppose and then uh, there are different paths, suppose this is one path and then you have another path, you can vary in whatever possible way but we, uh, we want that the end points remain fixed. So this uh, f uh, fixing of endpoints is uh, what we call as specifying a boundary condition. And that means that the eta function for all alpha, it this must be 0 whenever uh, we have x1 and x2 as the arguments or the parameter value. So this causes this term to drop out and the final 
form of the integrand is of this form. Now we can simply say that uh, this part is zero for the path y of x to be an extrema. This gives us uh, this particular equation that we see here. And then now uh, this was a general case with no reference to what y is or wh what the parameter x is. But suppose the parameter x is time and y is a generalized coordinate. Uh, it need not be, it can be the angle theta of a pendulum or it can also be the uh, position from origin of a particle traveling uh, of a free particle. So such generalized coordinates, when we put uh, this substitution, we get the Euler-Lagrange equation. So uh, this was uh, the Euler-Lagrange equation for a particular coordinate Q. But if the Lagrangian has several coordinates, the entire dependence of Lagrangian will be of this form, where Q1 is also a function of time, Q2 also a function of time like that. And then we will have the Euler-Lagrange equations for each of the uh, coordinates Qi. Uh, but here the, so one of the important point is that uh, if you have n coordinates, so you have uh, 2n degrees of freedom. So uh, you have n coordinates. That means um, the space where the Lagrangian lives, which is called the configuration space. Uh, it has a dimension of 2n. n comes from these n q's and then other n comes from these uh, q dots. But now uh, we turn to a more general setting where we not only allow this q, this q were a function of time till now, now we make them a function of time as well as position. So the moment we make the q as a function of time and position, we just name them as phi. This phi is this q, but we have the position and time both as the independent variable. Now when we have such a configuration. Now, uh, first of all, uh, earlier we were needing 2n degrees of freedom to specify the system, uh, which is captured by the Lagrangian, which is captured by the Lagrangian uh, because the Lagrangian has uh, 2n coordinates. But now you see uh, these generalized, uh, this uh, generalized uh, structure that we see here, which has which not only has time in it, but also the position in the real space, we will now require an infinite degree of freedom. Uh, this is because that every point, if, if a, at every point, the function phi x comma t will give us an output and that output is at least a number. It can also be a vector quantity if the field is a uh, vector field. So that's why this phi's are called the scalar fields. For now we are sticking with the scalar fields. Because this, if you evaluate at a particular time, at a particular space point, we will get a particular number. So uh, these are called the fields. And with this introduction of the fields, the Lagrangian which was earlier a function of generalized coordinates and their derivatives, time derivatives, will be now a function of the generalized fields, because now we have the fields, and then we have derivative with respect to time, uh, derivative with respect to space points also, like del x, del y, del z, these points. And so the Lagrangian has also changed. Uh, and in the similar fashion earlier when we were integrating with respect to time, now we will be performing an integration with respect to the uh, position. Uh, this uh, d4x is the integration. Now uh, with this uh, our with this our new Lagrangian is of this form. And this L is now no, uh, also called as Lagrangian density. It is not called an ordinary like Lagrangian. It is called as Lagrangian density. 
so uh, we again remember that now phi is a function of x and t so if you have like your coordinate system and you choose a point you will get a particular number or a vector if it is a vector field we will see that uh, vector fields uh, show up later so phi is a different object than when we have q as a function of t when we had q as a function of t so now with this uh, general uh, with this phi as a function of t uh, our action is actually changed to this form here now again we can perform a variation of action by saying that the field uh, first we choose the maximized field as phi a uh, phi a is like the uh, there can be many fields scalar fields phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 the a, a takes care of that value then we have uh, phi a and then we choose the variation parameter eta and then we can again perform the same calculation and can derive that the equation of motion in this case is of this form so here we see that for every a we get an equation of the field and here there is a summation between this mu index the upper and lower index so this derivation the variation that we have performed here with respect to alpha uh, it is similar to the previous one but we can also perform uh, this uh, variation in a uh, better way so what we can do is that we can write s as a function of which is a function of phi a and del mu phi a and then we say delta s we take the delta s which is integral d4 x delta of the Lagrangian so delta of the Lagrangian we write it in this way using the chain rule so a del L over del phi a delta of phi a plus a del L over del del mu phi a because there are two dependence and then we take delta of del mu phi a but we can commute the delta and del mu to get delta of phi a and uh, from here from here now uh, we can uh, try to convert this to a total derivative uh, so that we can say that the it vanishes at the boundaries uh, precisely what we did uh, before uh, so uh, let's see so I can write this as d4x now uh, we will just take this out so uh, it will give me uh, del mu del l over del del mu phi a uh, and then delta phi a but uh, I have to subtract the other term which is del mu of del L over del del mu phi A uh, del L over L uh, del, uh, del L over del phi del mu phi A and then I have delta phi A now uh, this uh, so now the Lagrangian is finally written as d4x del L over del phi A delta phi A uh, and then we have uh, this term also minus del mu del L over del del mu phi A delta phi A plus we have a total derivative term this total derivative is of this form d4x del mu del L over del del mu phi a delta phi a but now this total derivative will vanish uh, because uh, we need that uh, phi delta phi the variation delta phi the delta phi 
here is similar to this eta parameter that we have been using in the variation and we ask that this uh, delta phi a at uh, at some position so x comma t1 and uh, at x comma t2 is 0 so this will cause this total derivative to drop out and we will get finally this as the Lagrange equation of motion uh, for the fields so uh, with this uh, we can again go to a much more general setting where now instead of having these partial derivatives we actually have uh, the total derivative uh, so we actually have the covariant derivative so in case of curved space time uh, so in case of curved space time we have the lagrangian but the lagrangian the volume the volume of the space will be having a mod of modulus of the determinant of the uh, metric and this is the entire volume and then the Lagrangian will have a covariant derivative now this covariant derivative in case of scalar field will simply reduce to a normal derivative uh, or the normal partial derivative uh, so uh, del mu del mu is uh, del del x mu we have chosen a chart so and but in case of vector fields in case of vector fields we will see the introduction of the uh, connection coefficients or the Christoffel symbols so in case of Minkowski space time this determinant becomes 1 and hence we see that we actually get a normal Lagrangian that we see here so this was in case of Minkowski but if you have a more general metric, this uh, metric uh, volume need not be equal to 1 always. And in those cases, uh, we will also see the introduction of the uh, Christoffel coefficient. So, And this will be the uh, Lagrangian equation uh, for uh, this most general uh, case where these are now the connection coefficients. Uh, these are actually the connection over the metric or uh, the covariant derivative that we call so hence we have uh, found the uh, equation of uh, fields so that's all for this video uh, so in the next video we will uh, do few examples regarding uh, how to derive the equation of motion from this uh, Lagrangian uh, viewpoint